All right, YouTube, Brian Phillips here again, just working on this bridge. Uh, this one's going to be the bridge for our tractor and equipment that we need to get across. And not just a, a man bridge like this little crappy man bridge that'll be coming out uh, when we're done with this big bridge. Basically, I've been working along, uh, getting this thing, getting all these planks out here. They're 2 by 10 uh, by 10 feet long, treated lumber. And there's three big logs here. If you've been following along, you'll you'll know that already. And as I walk across here, we're not teetering like crazy. Now there's a little bit of movement, but it's minimal. And it's just a, a little bit of side to side and forward to backward, just you know, inconsequential amounts, stuff I can make up with small synthetic shims if I choose to do so. My original plan was to run a 16 foot board down the edge. And that's what I have these two by four 16 footers, also green treated, prepared to do. But as you can see, trying to get around this bigger tree is sort of undermining my plan there a little bit. And so I've decided that I'm not sure if I wanna try to kind of just push that little bump out and just make a straight line here, or if I wanna kind of ride the contour there but if you look down this side, it kind of follows the shape of the log so we get the maximum support. My concern, of course, would be if, uh, okay, sorry, it's too cool to miss. It's super foggy and the airplane is very low. Sorry guys. So basically my, my whole thought was if I had that straight piece there, it would help to hold these, these individuals as you drive through and you load one, it's gonna wanna squish down a little bit, or actually in this case, you'll be squishing down over here and then bending up. It's gonna help to brace all that movement. So I still could probably do it, but I'm just not sure I can do it with a straight shot. And it wouldn't necessarily be a big issue if I came in a few inches and did it still. Uh, secondarily, that would help to catch the tractor tires if it was a slick day and I was coming across and slipped. But for practical purposes, this this bridge is going to be used predominantly for vehicle transport during the during the summer months. And you can see that's what I'm talking about, where we've just got a little bit of a little bit of play. And I believe that we'll be able to tighten these bolts down. And I'll show you not the bolts, but the uh, I'm using these SPACs, and SPACs are basically replacements for lag screws. It's an alternative choice, of course. And uh, so I'm not sure if they're gonna work as good as I want them to. Supposedly, you're not supposed to have to pre-drill. I'm not sure if I necessarily buy that. Um, uses a, a T30, a Torx 30. It's actually, they've got a proprietary bit on some of their stuff, but I think this one just uses the Torx. Torx 30. So you're supposed to be able to use these things and who knows if they'll actually work as good as they say they will. They're expensive. So, but my plan was to use two on each of three points all the way down the length. But I ended up with two extra pieces because of the angle that I was able to get away with on this bridge. Now, if I would have put them totally square, then I would have had more reach over the end of my supportive um, logs. But that's not necessarily what I'm after. I don't want to have too much beyond the log because then if you make the turn, you could unknowingly break and fall off the bridge pretty easy. So we'll just jump down here real quick and give you a side view before we start lagging these things down using our steps. It's our original homemade little step job there. You can see it looks really cool. It's not perfect. You can see, especially like over here, we've got Kind of still a high point but the idea was to kind of make it look el natural and i think we've captured that so anyway without further ado we're gonna we're gonna start doing that um i don't think i'm even gonna film any part of it except for maybe i might pre-drill a couple and just show you how they go in with the impact driver just for your understanding if you want to know how the spacks work and it's S-P-A-X for spelling. 
And uh, the other thing is, you may have noticed that this angle is slightly different than that angle, in that as you go along the bridge, it's rotating slightly. And that means that my gap is gonna be slightly bigger on this end than it is on this end. And that's perfectly okay with me. I don't really mind because there's gonna be a certain amount of imperfection on this bridge and that's just the way it's gonna be. Of course, it'd be nice if it was perfect, but like over here, the gap here is different than the gap here. That's because this log bended or not, it didn't bend. It just, um, we ended up having it rotate as it fell down. I wanted to put it with a crown up and keep it nice and symmetrical, but it would have been a nightmare to shim these boards. So it's almost a blessing in disguise that it wanted to find that particular spot. So, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it and I'm just gonna start setting them in place and then just working my way from one side to the other. I originally planned on going in the middle, but it just didn't end up being, being necessary and very supportive. I don't have any doubts about this bridge holding up that, that machine. Um, I take it on a trailer and uh, the trailer is a 16 foot trailer and it's got just regular two by six decking. So these are actually quite a bit more robust. It's a quarter inch thicker on each board. Should be totally fine. And then of course, if these don't end up working out, I'll come up with another solution and share that with you. So we'll come back with some clips of uh, putting those things in. Thanks for watching guys. All right guys, so we've got the first six, or excuse me, four, uh, four, four and four, 12 spacks down. And uh, just to give you an idea, I'm using uh, an 18 volt uh, lithium ion Bosch setup. Nothing, nothing real particularly special about that, but it's not the bigger pack. Some of these, some of these newer drills are coming out with a, quite a bit more power. And one thing I'm figuring out about these spacks is that yes, they will, they will work without pre-drilling. Um, but I'm still going to pre-drill. So here's how I'm doing it. Basically, just using my pencil to mark. Uh, the position of the of the wood so I'm actually going this way because I want a, a pretty big gap and then I'm just following the line of uh, spacks and just making sure I'm kind of hitting the the crown of the log which is pretty straightforward and I'm just taking my drill and so I'm going to do this left-handed so I can show you what it looks like we'll do one with pre-drill and then one without just so you can see and we're going to be hitting a, a knot up at the top of that. So we'll just uh, do that right now. Let's do two spacks. We'll start the one. I'm right-handed, so I'm holding the camera with my right hand. It's a little bit awkward. My camera crew is sick today. So... it just stops and I don't know that's either good or bad but I can tell you one other thing about these that I don't particularly like is I put it in reverse let's see if I can take it out not really so that just means it's biting extremely hard which is which is good but it's also kind of bad because I had planned on pulling these up to put the concrete in so and I can't do the second hole I have to go down and have to go down and space this one so basically, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that part now. Probably just going to have to get a, a bigger battery or bigger power system or a brushless one or something like that. But I told you this side would be a little bit bigger gap, and I'm not sure if I've decided to totally go back on that or not. But I'm just trying my best to get some uniformity built into this. Okay, so we're just going to line up these these. Then we're going to go out about, about the same distance, make sure I'm hitting the crown of the log, which is a little bit hard to show on, on camera. But I know that, that dot's where I want to hit, right there. So I'll just make a little X. And then, of course, uh, this, is, this is challenging with one hand. So you can sort of pick up the, the drill bits one-handed. But uh, I'm going to have to do that. Let's see if I can do this real quick. Once it bites, it goes. And I don't know if this is a, an anti-endorsement for my Bosch hammer drill. Uh, or impact driver. Or if it's an endorsement for the SPACs. 
or if it's uh, just the, that they don't work well together. Um, I don't really care about the particular fasteners that much, but I did want to do something that's going to hold up to weather and it's going to give me a nice tight bite on these boards. For instance, I'm going to step out on here. You can see there's, there's nothing, there's no play at all um, from those bite points. It's just going to hold this whole thing together and I'm bouncing on that guys. So when this is all said and done, I'll give you a quick shot of it and uh, let you enjoy. Although the lighting is getting pretty poor, so I'll try my best. <laughs> 